Come on, boys. Hoopla! I'm looking, I'm looking. Gabriel leers at the dancer, but she seems to want a more overt demonstration of his appreciation. Thanks, boys. Boys, hoopla! Not a bad idea. Mmm, <whistles> baby, I love the way you move. Madame Dorelai winks knowingly at Gabriel and twitches her hips. Yep, she wants me. Thanks, boys. Madam Lorelei, is it? What can I do for you, handsome? I think this veil belongs to you. Oh, my veil! I'm always losing those things. You have no idea. Well, darling, you're such a sweetie to return a lady's delicates and, and so handsome as well. Well, I... And since you have such a clear interest in fortune-telling, let me see your hands. They look so strong. Perhaps they will make both our fortunes clear, no? I wish something would. Mmm, strong, yes, and yet so delicate and flexible. <sighs> you don't know the half of it. Oh, good. I see a mysterious woman in your immediate future. Madam Lorelei winks at Gabriel knowingly. She is a dangerous one, dark and beautiful. Oh, I see the road of your life forking, and very soon... The blood drains from Madam Lorelei's face in an instant. Sweat beads on her upper lip. Are you okay? There are forces. Oh God, beware, beware. What is it about me lately? Gabriel wouldn't mind picking up a few extra bucks by using Madame Lorelei's booth while she's gone. But he doesn't know how to belly dance.
Hey, Grace, here I am. Oh boy, party time. Gabriel can't see a way to use that. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? You know, you really should get out more. But then who'd take care of St. George's? Me. Exactly. Gabriel can't see a way to use that. The artist's reconstruction of the voodoo murders pattern looks accurate to Gabriel. Something about it seems vaguely familiar and creepy. I've got some things I need to do. Good luck. Gabriel decides to give Mosley a break and not change the temperature again. Hey, hey, hey. Night. Come on in. Are you sure that's wise? Mosley would surely wonder where Gabriel got that and what he intends to do with it. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? You're as filled in as me. You know, if you started carrying a lollipop around, you might get more respect as a detective. Go to hell. That doesn't work that way. I'll let you get back to it. Later, Knight. A drummer has decided to sit up outside the police station.
Using that on the tomb wall won't help. The wall doesn't work that way. The marks are reddish in color and remind Gabriel of crosses. They look like they've been here a few days at least. Gabriel can't take the marks with him that way. I don't need to go visit the family tomb today. Malia? Mr. Knight, what are you doing here? Um, uh, my family's tomb is here. Mine too. Unnoticed. Subtle. Well, Mr. Knight, if there's nothing else... Don't go. I need to talk to you. Whatever for? I can't stop thinking about you. I've been in your thoughts too. I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Knight, you don't know anything about me. I'm not in a position to get involved. I've said that a million times myself, but this is different. I think we both know we can't fight it. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have so many obligations. My family is very traditional. You wouldn't understand. Hey, I love tradition. I've seen Fiddler on the Roof a hundred times. <laughs> this isn't a musical, Mr. Knight. We live in different worlds. Look, I know you got more money than God. Do you think I care? Do you think that's why I'm saying this? No, I don't. Why don't you come see my world? I've got a little bookshop, St. George's, on Bourbon. I know. See, I knew it. You're crazy about me, too. Come by tonight, please. My world isn't so bad. I'm sorry, but there's no place for someone like you in my life. Not now, not ever. Damn it. It's locked shut. The tomb door is securely shut against the material world. Gabriel looks at and in the vases, but he doesn't see anything he wants to take. The tomb doors would be impassive to anything Gabriel tried to use on them. The old man is apparently doing some cleanup work. Seeing as how this is a cemetery, Gabriel doesn't really want to know what all is in that trash can. Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. What other tombs got marked? Can you show me? 
No, no, I ain't one for naming names. I don't like to encourage that kind of thing. It's distressing to the families, and rightly so. Does this mean anything to you? Nope. I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. Really? I forgot you were gone. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? I've got some things I need to do. Good luck. Looks like the lecture is just starting. Voodoo is the tribal religion of Africa, but the name Voodoo is actually a banner heading, under which resides an entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Voodoo may sound familiar to you. What is known in the States as Voodoo is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems, Voodoo, and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of these subcults of African voodoo have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems have. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific tasks or places. Some represent important tribal leaders who have died. This spirit worship is what makes voodoo so easily adaptable. With all these spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. One tribe would conquer another, and the Loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's Loa pantheon. In this way, many of the voodoo cults spread and mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the Voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices. Animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sick. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the Voodoo Loa may be as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And note, I said primal, not primitive. There are African Bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of Voodoo. Fascinating guy. In Voodoo, the spirits are called the Loa. During a Voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the Loa. This is called being ridden. The human worshiper is seen as a horse and the Loa as the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a Loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. Some of the older original Africa Loa include Dambala, the great serpent god, Ezuli, the mistress of love, Papa Nibo, or Gede, the Lord of Death, Awe, the Spirit of Water, Legba, 
spirit of the crossroads, and the cruelest and most dangerous, Ogun Badagri, the Lord of Destruction. I gotta get more sleep at night. Tribe-specific Loire can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped Loire. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the Loire of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Boudoum temples are called Houndfors. Their priests, Houngan or Bokors, their priestesses, Mama Loire. In a Voodoo Houndfor, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a Poteau Meton. During ritual conclaves, initiates dance under the supervision of a Bokor and a Mama Loa, or head priestess. The use of totems, or animal masks and markings, was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. Now, though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves included the ritual gourd, or asan, the ritual knife, or kubasa. That knife gives me the chills. The ritual whip, or fwet cash, and the ritual coffin, or seke madule. These items are often optional, called for by the Mama Loa for specific magical rituals. The Mama Loa is the most powerful figure in any Voodoo sect. Voodoo is a truly matriarchal system. Even the Bokor knows his power is limited. The Mama Loa is the supreme woman. She goes out of her house at night, sees many things, and tries to get butterflies. And at night again, she sees other things, including fireflies. Young man, the lecture is over. Oh my god. Sorry. A projection screen dominates the front of the hall. The podium, Hot Ridge's throne. Are you a student? No. My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Well, you've already interrupted and slept through my lecture, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. If you figure it out, let me know. Do you know what Cabri Sancor means? Cabri Sancor? Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French, and literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No, as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in Voodoo are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, bulls, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. What can you tell me about voodoo? You already sat through my lecture on the subject, Mr. Knight. Perhaps next time you could stay awake and learn something. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm not a zoologist, Mr. Knight but I know all I care to about reptiles.
Tell me about Dambala. Dambala is one of the major Rada Loa, also known as Dambala Wedo. He is an ancient Dahomean rain god, often represented as a large boa constrictor. Dambala is the most powerful and most violent of the Rada Loa. The Rada Loa are typically benevolent, as opposed, say, to the Patro Loa. He is still worshipped heavily in Haiti, and when voodoo first started in New Orleans, the early conclaves were reportedly based on the worship of the great zombie, the great serpent, Dambala. Tell me more about Dambala. I have extensive courses in the Loire running next semester. Perhaps you should take one of those, Mr. Knight. Do you know anything about Veves? If you'd taken notes during my lecture, you wouldn't have to ask. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? While I find the colloquial bastardizations of Voodoo somewhat interesting, from a sheerly intellectual point of view, there's not a lot of relation between people like Laveau and true Voodoo practices. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's June 23rd, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. But June 23rd has been a sacred day since the earliest times. Ancient sun worshippers used to roll a flaming wheel down a hill to celebrate the sun's descent on that day. A burning wheel? Huh. Tell me about Ogun Badagri. Ogun Badagri is one of the Patrolawa. The Patrolawa are much more violent than the Radalawa. Some people believe the Patrolawa originated in Haiti, but I have found some evidence that the Patrolawa were African as well, though worshipped only by a small Voodoo tribe, and a very bloody one. Tell me more about Ogun Badagri. He is a chief nasty, Mr. Knight. He is the spirit of war and destruction. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's very rare. Most Voodoo practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record. But it is theoretically possible, if that's what the gods demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Ezuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, oh, where will we find one? Ezuli is the gentlest of Loire, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Haungan tremble before possession by one of the more violent Loire, such as Papa Nebo. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that Loire will simply take it for themselves. Tell me more about human sacrifice. I wouldn't dwell on it. Most Voodoo sects probably haven't seen a human sacrifice for several generations. What do you know about the Voodoo murders? I've read about them in the papers. I must admit to some interest. But according to the newspapers, the Voodoo aspect is faked, so I haven't really pursued it. You know how Americans, especially Hollywood, treat Voodoo. I'm sure there are many so-called practitioners out there that have no idea what they're doing or the power they're playing with. Do you know anything about animal masks? As I said in my lecture, which I assume you actually listened to, is that animal masks, totems, are used extensively in most African voodoo religions.
What can you tell me about New Orleans? I find it interesting to see the occasional fragment of voodoo practices in the everyday culture of New Orleans. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? The Catholic Church has always dominated in New Orleans, and its imagery in turn has dominated New Orleans voodoo. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? If there's more you wish to know, perhaps you should read my books. Tell me about yourself. All right, Mr. Knight. I'm 35, a fully tenured professor at this university, as well as a fellow at Cambridge. My doctorate was obtained at Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse, in religious studies. I'm an agnostic, but I find human belief systems fascinating. I specialize in African religions because I grew up there. My father was a Protestant missionary. And I am heterosexual when I practice sex at all, which isn't very often. Any other questions? Oh, uh, no. Fine. Your lecture was terrific. Oh, you think so? You were snoring so loud I didn't think you'd heard it. What was that translation for Cabri Sankar again? It's French, and literally translates as goat without horns. Can you tell me anything about this? Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating veve. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, some. That's why I wanted a copy. I want to research the design myself. Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No. You're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Boy, are they wrong. You think this uh, Veve is authentic? Authentic? Mr. Knight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. Tell you what, I'll look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. Uh, but I'm undercover. You can contact me at St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. All right. Now, I'd like to get started on this, if you don't mind. Can you tell me anything about this? No. I've never seen those symbols. Therefore, they're probably meaningless. Really? Are you sure? I'm never wrong, Mr. Knight. Therefore, sure is not in my vocabulary. Can you tell me anything about this? No, I'm afraid I can't. Is there anything you can tell me about the voodoo aspects of this photograph? This is a serious voodoo ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph, except for the corpse, of course. But the wound, the face, and what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia... Hmm. It reminds me of certain black voodoo practices. Very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, you understand. Really? 
Interesting, thanks. Can you tell me anything about this? No, I'm afraid I can't. The door to Hartridge's office is locked. There's a PA speaker on the wall. Dr. Hartridge is sharp-eyed and even sharper-tongued. When he condescends to look at Gabriel at all, it is with a dismissive glare. Up for a few more questions? Gee, I'd love to. Tell me what you mean by black voodoo. Well, like any religion, the beliefs can tend toward positive or negative ends, can be used for good or evil. Christianity, for example, has its doppelganger, Satanism. Anytime you attempt to set up an icon to explain evil, you invite some warped mind to worship it. The same is true of Voodoo. There are those who are drawn by and desire personal power from the darker, bloodier Loa. Can you give me an example of black voodoo? All right. There is a very secret, very dark cult in Haiti called the Cult des Morts, Cult of the Dead. Their primary loa is Papa Nebo, loa of the cemetery. They practice a particularly disgusting form of necromancy, magic using the dead. They dig up corpses and use their decaying bodies for various spells and curses. Can you give me another example of black voodoo? In tribal Africa, there were, and still are, black bokors, shaman bent toward the dark, who not only practice necromancy, but also human sacrifice. Is there anything else you can tell me about black voodoo? Only that if it's being practiced in this city, none of us are safe. Do you know anything about Veves? I told you I would research it, Mr. Knight. When I have anything concrete, I'll let you know. 